guess what the second day of spring and it's 30 degrees outside come on guys it's spring what happened to the temperatures we had saturday and sunday i don't know they're gone they disappeared i had this great plan i was going to do without coffee this morning and i didn't need it because it was going to be not such a bad day because it's spring oh no 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 i drove from ball ground to ella j and walked to the coffee pot as quick as i could get to it so it's chilly this morning so it's time to sit down enjoy maybe uh, the last fire in the fireplace i hope it's the last fire in the fireplace it's time for spring it's time to um, get the kids together we're going to have easter coming up we're going to have spring break coming up and a lot of folks this year i've heard from are saying we don't have the money to take a vacation for spring break what do we do well, my idea is you get in the kitchen with the kids. There's a problem with that. You can't afford to get in the kitchen with the kids because you've been to the grocery store lately and you know how crazy the prices are. I have this cookbook and I want to ask, there's a whole lot of ladies sitting out there who may have a copy of this. I can't find out the year it was produced, but I'm going to do some of the recipes out of this cookbook in the near future. These are recipes I have never heard tell of, and some of them sound like there's a whole a page of them where everybody has their different idea how you make this certain item. I'd never heard tell of it either, so I'm going to make it, and it is called a salmon loaf, and I was like, what? But salmon was on sale yesterday at Ingalls for $3.98. So now I'm the proud owner of about eight cans of salmon because when it's on sale at 50 cents, that means you saved $4. Well, you had to spend 40 to save four. Does that make sense? Probably not. But anyway, I'm gonna try the recipe. But if y'all have, this is an Eastern Star cookbook and I kind of inherited it from somebody and I don't know the year it was produced, but I would love to know because what I'm doing is as I try some of these recipes, I'm gonna add up what it costs to make this recipe. And then I wanna go back to the year that this cookbook was produced, and I wanna see what did it cost to produce that meal for a family of four way back when. I guarantee it was different, because if you've been to the grocery store, I select shop and I go to this store and I get what's on sale, and then I go to this store and I get what's on sale, and then I go to this store and get what's on sale. But if you add up your $3.29 a gallon gas, you haven't saved a penny. So it's very weird how we're having to do this and we're kind of forced into this. We didn't ask for these prices to be jumped onto us, but it happened, so we gotta deal with it. But again, if you have this, this is Eastern Star Old Family Favorites. And um, it came from a ball ground estate, so I know it's been around a while. But I'd love to know the year. And honestly, it has some recipes that you can tell little old ladies stayed in the kitchen a whole lot more time than we do now. Because there's some really fancy foo-foo things in here. So I'm gonna try to recreate some of them and I think it's gonna be fun. But again, I need to know the year that this cookbook was produced because I want to know what the grocery prices were then. I can guarantee you eggs were probably 18 cents a dozen. I <laughs> go buy a dozen eggs today, about $2.59. So yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. So again, if you can help me out with that, that would be awesome and I would appreciate it so much. Talk to Mike Smith. I had he and Darren uh, scheduled to come and be with us and one has the crud that's going around that's just the, I think it's just the allergy stuff. And then the other one had a knee replacement. He's doing really, really good. So he's doing so good with this knee replacement, he's gonna have another knee replacement. And I'm like, oh, you are a glutton for punishment. But y'all see what I have on today? This reminds me, this Rich Scott and his wife Patricia gave me this many, many, many years ago. And when I got it out this morning, I said, it kind of makes me feel like Scarlett O'Hara. Remember when she went and pulled the drapes down and made herself a dress? And then Kara Barnett did the same thing on a comedy skit. Well, I kind of felt like that today because it's got this little foo-foo on it and it reminds me of Granny's old drapes, but I kind of liked it and I thought, well, it's cold weather and it'll keep my neck warm. So, so I did it and I just giggled all the way up the road. I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be a Scarlett O'Hara day. So 
You know, I, I told y'all about this book, and I want to encourage each and every one of you because I've been reading it a lot lately, and God does keep showing up. And this is from Mike Smith, and again, it's available on Amazon. And I've never read this part, but I think today that in today's world, we have to look for a light. And this is a very short, uh, in part of the opening, it's God's light. Light spring joy, light spring hope, light spring salvation. The light from the lighthouse shows the ships at sea in bad storms the way home. Someone lost in the woods at night, when seeing a light from someone searching, that gives them hope. Over 2,000 years ago, God provided another light, the one in the sky for wise men to follow when they found a child who God sent as a light to the world. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the light comes within us. The Holy Spirit allows that light to shine through the brokenness of our own lives. Lights can only be seen through broken vessels, and we will all have those cracks in the jars of clay that we are made from. Sin made the darkness, but God's light overcame it. I pray you have that light within you. That light will lead you home. I love that. That is so cool. And there's so many families that the families are broken, the spirits are broken. Somebody doesn't speak to somebody. Somebody doesn't go here. Somebody doesn't. It's, it's, it's a crazy world we're living in. So, so I think y'all buy, buy Mike's book. And every day, read God's light, because God's light can maybe, maybe turn things around for you. So, today, 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 I want to share what I love to do in the kitchen with kids. And this is a recipe that uh, Lucy Van Doren gave me, and it's called Nana's Nest. And when I first did it, I said, it's fun, but it takes a lot of grease to do this, and it's expensive. Well, we will notice in our everyday lives, we often look for the easy way out. So I was in a local grocery store, and I saw what looked to me like the easy way out. If you like Philly steak sandwiches, they had calzone, calzones, prepackaged, three bucks. And I thought, well, that's not bad. It's six dollars to buy a sandwich anywhere. So I thought, well, I'll try that. Well, do not heat these things in the microwave. And I'm gonna show you the difference because I'm not showing you the one we did in the microwave because it ended up kind of rubbery. If you buy pre-made stuff, don't run to the microwave with it. Wrap it in aluminum foil, put it in the oven, and slowly heat it, and you will see such a difference. And we're gonna show you that because this $3 sandwich, it's Philly steak and cheese, was good when it was done right. But it was like eating a garden hose when it was done wrong. It was like if you throw it in the microwave, it is rubbery, it is chewy, it was ugh, yuck. And because the store I bought it in is about to have a grand opening here in L.J., I want to encourage you to try to shop and make your life simple. You don't have to cook all the time. You could take this to the office and eat it. But if you're at the office eating it, you don't have an oven and you would microwave it and you would be eaten like a rubbery garden hose. So don't do that. Use it at home and heat it slowly in the oven. So we're gonna show you this little, couple of little clips of how it came out of the oven and it was really tasty when I did it right. It was really yucky when I did it wrong. So here we go. Yeah. Okay guys, this calzone, calzone that failed the recipe test last time. This was pre-made, bought in a store. I'm not going to disclose the name of the store because I don't want to give him a bad rap. But when a, a guy comes home from work and he's starving to death and he can't eat it, that's not very good. So if it's pre-packaged, uh, well, it looks a little bready, huh? Good cheese pool. Yeah, yeah. So we may try that and we may give you a report that's better because it actually looks better than the last one. The last one was done in the microwave. And maybe that was the problem. So we're going to test this one, and then we will see, does it pass or fail the hungry, after work, starving boy test? Okay, guys, we are going to do the taste test. We're going to let you see what it looks like. doesn't look so bad, but doing it in the microwave did not work. Did not work. So if you're in a hurry, forget it. Don't do it in the microwave. Yuck up. But here we go. Mmm. It was so yummy. I tasted it and I loved it. And I was like, oh, well, that wasn't a bad $3 investment. So, you know, if you're going to the grocery store today, 
You're going to buy what's on sale. You're going to shop wisely because your money doesn't go as far as it used to. If you invite the grandkids over for spring break, I know you're going to want to do some cute recipes with them. And I want to share this one. This was Lucy Van Doren brought me this. And the only bad thing about it is you have to do, you fry the um, tortilla that you make the shell out of. Took a lot of grease, and grease is outrageously expensive right now. And there's really no other way to make this little shell work. So, so you'll have to do that. But if you take care of your grease and you keep it covered, you can use it again for French fries. You can do stuff. You just can't fry meat or fish in it because then it makes it kind of, it gets all yucky and you have to change it and it's too expensive. So, but Nana's Nest is a fun recipe for the kids. They love it. They love watching how you dye the coconut. So we're going to go to that now and hope that you'll pay attention to it and try it with your grandkids. Again, it's one of those recipes that has something hot in it. So you have to do it to protect the kids. But here we go. I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, I'm so honored. I want my guest to introduce himself to you. Hello, I'm uh, Sergeant Major Tony Gate in the United States Army. Tony lives in Tate, Georgia, and Tony and I spent last Easter together, but it was an email, wasn't it? Yeah. Email, yeah. you were in Baghdad, That's you correct. attended a sunrise service in Baghdad while we were here attending church. Um, you're home, you're safe, I'm so grateful. Communicating with you was wonderful because I knew when the guys were coming home, we were placing yellow ribbons for your um, group of fellows that came home. When did 48th Brigade? 48th Brigade, yes. 48th Brigade um, safely came home. I was so pleased. I was so pleased with the neighborhood. Everybody turned out and everybody supported you. And it was such a pleasure to know that we knew, you know, when you were coming, when the guys were going to be there. It was easy to coordinate because we could email across the world. We could email. So it was wonderful. It was one of the most special days in my life. I guarantee uh, and you. I and it was for Jasper. It was for Jasper. Thank you. Um, he's here for Easter. And we're going to share a recipe that my adopted mama, Lucy Van Doren, created. It's called Nana's Nest. The ingredients for this recipe are a um, flour tortilla shell. And I must tell you, you can't use the fat free. You need the fat. So. And then um, with that, we um, will fry that, then cinnamon, sugar, ice cream. We're going to decorate it with coconut that we're going to dye green that will look like grass. Okay. That'll be your job. <laughs> the topping ingredients are fresh pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. And do I get to be the general in this episode? Can I be your hey, boss? You're in charge. Oh, I'm in charge. I, I'm I never in charge. Well. Oh, good, good. We're starting with a tortilla shell. We're going to fold it in half. The pattern is a star because when this comes out, it actually looks like a jagged edge that an egg would come out of when an egg is hatched. All right. And you're going to cut this for me. Boy, you mind good. I like men who take orders. I bet your wife likes that too. You got it? There you I'm go. The pattern. There you go. There you go. Just hold it down until it cooks. How, long, how do I know how when it's done? Just it takes about probably 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. So now we're going to take it out with this appliance. There you go, so you can drain the grease. Cool. That's pretty good. I think you're hired. <laughs> Sit it down there. Right. Now, we've taken our hot nest, and we are going to cover it in cinnamon and sugar. That was quick, huh? You did a good job. You did a good job. Now, we're going to make grass. We're going to make right. coconut grass. Now, I want you to put me about three drops of green food coloring in there. Right. We're going to start with about three drops. Okay, our grass is done. We're going to put a little bit of grass around the nest, and then we'll put a little bit on top of it. But we are going to start with a scoop of peach ice cream. Now, your job is to garnish this, and I want you okay. to just be creative. I'm not going to fuss. I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do. You just do what you think you would like. Pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. Tony, we're almost finished. What does a nest need? Well, you got bird eggs, but no birds. So how I see a bird. A peep. Wow. All right. There you go. There you go. Guys, this has been, honestly, my favorite heart of the home, my best guest. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what you do for a living. Thank you so much for everything you do for Thank our country. Um, Y'all keep in touch. Email your soldiers. Remember, they're over there fighting for us. Keep in touch with them. 
Thank you again. Thank Hi, I'm Sherry Martin, and tonight on Heart of the Home, my buddy Johnson Collins, one of my favorite guests, is here to help me celebrate. What are we celebrating? The one-year anniversary. The one-year anniversary of Heart of the Home. We've been on the air a year. We've had a lot of fun. We've done some simple recipes. We've done some good recipes. <laughs> you helped with a deer recipe. And tonight, um, we have a friend who's going to come by and bring us a special dessert. While we're waiting on Miss Lucy, Johnson and I are going to talk about something that I never forgot. In the eighth grade, I had a really special teacher. My home ec teacher, Mrs. Maisel Kemp, loved her, absolutely loved her. And she taught me some really simple things that I never forgot. And I hope to teach you some simple things that you won't forget. One of them is how to set a table. You don't just grab a fork. You do salad fork, dinner fork. What is this fork for? Um. How about an appetizer or a shrimp cocktail? Kind of looks like a baby fork, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody um, should learn to set the table correctly. And today, we're just going to talk a little bit about that and some of the things that you do need to learn because someday you may be entertaining the governor. <laughs> what do you think of that? Okay, Miss Johnson, now, I'm going to take these apart. You've seen how the table's set. Do you think you can do it now if I remove them? Yes. Okay. Let's do this. Now, you decide how you put them correctly back in place. And you know, you can use linen na napkins too. On our formal table, we iron and use linen napkins. That's not one of my favorite things because I usually get to iron the napkins. But today we're gonna use paper because we're using the casual table in the breakfast room. There you go. Now, what's that fork? This one? Mm -hmm. This is salad fork. Salad fork, your dinner fork. And do you know if we went to a really, really foo-foo restaurant, we might have another fork. Would that confuse you? Yes. Maybe. And if we had soup, we'd have a soup spoon. And if we had iced tea, we'd have another spoon. This could get confusing, guys. <laughs> now, how old are you? Nine. Nine. That could really confuse a nine-year-old. You learned pretty quickly, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I think you're pretty smart. You gonna go home and share this with mom and dad? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I think I hear our special dessert coming in the door. <gasps> it's time to celebrate. There you go. Johnson, I promised you a cake for a celebration. Mm. Our friend Lucy Van Doren just made us a wonderful, simple dessert. Lucy, tell me about it. It's a homemade angel food cake. Yes. Uh, all you do is slice it in three layers, just like you would, uh, you know, a regular cake. Mm -hmm. And uh, you use a serrated knife because if you don't, it will tear it. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then all you do is take a 20-ounce can of crushed pineapple, an 8-ounce Cool Whip and two instant puddings, vanilla puddings, and you don't do anything except mix the, those three ingredients together. If you put anything else there, it's going to be too gooey. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Very simple. And that looks simple, looks elegant, looks like it's going to be light. It is. It's very looks light. like it's going to be light. And you can, you don't have to make a homemade cake. No. You can go to the store and for what, $1.99? Right. Buy an angel food cake, show up at homecoming with this, right. and somebody's going to think you've cooked all day. <laughs> Garnish it with strawberries, right? right? Whatever mm -hmm. fruit is in season. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to enjoy this. Thank you, Lucy, for stopping well, by to welcome. help us celebrate our one uh, year anniversary. You can also do the sides if you want to oh, with yeah. another mix of Cool Whip and right. pineapple and right. pudding. Right. Right. Um, and we love simple desserts. Right. This, is, this is a good simple dessert. We promised you a simple dessert for our one-year anniversary. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back.